El Jorge Ga asks, How do you plan your comics? I still haven't figured out a way that works for me. So in this video, let's talk about writing. Hello everyone, I am MG, a storyteller and a comic artist. Welcome to my channel. And there are so many techniques, outlines, etc. And it also heavily depends if the comic is for yourself right now or you are going to publish someday. So I will just share basically main three and I use them all currently. I want to clarify that basically there are no rules on how you want to make a comic. What matters is that it works for you and then your audience, but yes. Number one, just do it by the seat of your pants. This method is still used by some professional comic authors and basically you sit down and you make each comic page as you imagined in your head you skip some steps that most people follow but you don't really care about making it a separate paper character design tools plot nothing really structured just what you have in your head you are telling a story to yourself now i know there are as i said many people that do follow this method but Personally, I wouldn't recommend this one strongly if you are thinking of going public with it right now, like sharing it online right now, or even worse, getting books out there that people have to pay for. Uh, but if it's just a hobby that you do for fun, I would definitely tell you to sacrifice a bit of those video games or Netflix and just do this. If you love it, you will enjoy it so much more, I promise. Now. This method is the one I used the most when I was a little girl and it made me create so many stories and comics but it also has downsides like I wouldn't finish so many stories or there were things that weren't consistent with the magic rules that I may have established at the beginning stuff like that that is dangerous and even worse if there's an audience waiting for you to sort out as the story they are enjoying and that you could potentially ruin as well again that's why being a pantser I don't recommend it strongly unless it's your unique way of doing this yeah <laughs> there are still creators that are published that do this method and just go creating things as they go along and that's the way they enjoy the comics and I myself I also love this method but there is still that danger that some creators regret so it really varies from person to person number two using an outline as complex as you need and different plot methods I already talked about outlines on other videos so I will be brief but basically an outline it's a plan for your story from beginning to end this method I used it very easily on Winter Secrets I know how my main protagonist Elena is left alone by her parents in the middle of the woods then she meets the first person she can talk to in years and the different dangers and following events that are going to happen I know the ending I know the alternative ending I know everything in between <laughs> I have no doubt about anything there are different plot methods that I also really like there are some like the hero's journey and I really like the embryo plot structure which is basically the, the same as the hero's journey where you follow more or less a template of the hero has a situation then receives a call to adventure so he the hero leaves the place that he or she knows and then goes to a different state etc but what's important is what you have to do is to sit down and write just to write without caring if it's right or wrong at first and then you will correct it either do half an hour every day or like me i personally try to push through like six to eight hours in a day in a rare day and then do it again in a couple of weeks just like stephen king just write don't care if it's interesting or not except to you and just write then you can edit correct things that may be boring and characters and 
many corrections, but start by just writing. I have the suspicion that because you say it hasn't worked out for you, I don't know how often you have tried and decided that it doesn't work out for you. Comment down below if you want to explain specifically your problem but it seems that like you still need to make a writing habit so but it may be not because of your discipline but because maybe your story is very complex which I will also cover in future videos but for now I will also show you my favorite method right now which is number three write it like if it's a TV show Bible a TV show Bible is a reference or little book or document that is very used by screenwriters in TV shows to keep track of the information needed. There you have your logline, characters, inspirations, what's going to happen in each chapter after you made your outline, etc. And this is the method that I am currently using for my war, my webtoon. But of course, not only having the letters, also having the character designs and some artwork here and there. And the reason for that is because it's a very complex story, but that I want to tell it in a very simple way. I don't want to confuse my reader. So May is a beautiful girl. She's a spy disguising as a male soldier in a military academy full of other characters, students, teachers, other spies. I also have to keep in mind the other subplots with the other spies, as I said, the two countries being at war, the romance, the, the brothel as the headquarters of the spies from one of the countries, how the government and the empress affect the story even by being far away, different politics, you know, it's just so much it can get confusing. but. Having a TV show Bible, you can keep up with all the information and also make sure you don't have plot holes that you aren't solving and you know what your goal is for each chapter. And that's also so something super important because a very good advice on writing says that if you are not pushing the plot forward, you are only writing whatever you want, it isn't good because you are going to confuse your reader. I'm personally loving to use the templates that Studio Binder provides. I am not sponsored by them, I just love their channel and teachings about a TV show because I feel like many things do apply to webcomics as well. So I will include a very useful playlist down below where you can get those templates and also learn a little bit about how to make a very good pilot, a very good story, etc. In those templates, you fill out your own information about your comic. This is cool, right? Yeah. It technically shows you how to make a TV show with many episodes and seasons, especially if you have a complex story and a very long story. It helps you pitch the story to some producer that would buy your series. And of course, I modify it to suit my needs and you can do the same. Now, I also do some things without these templates, as I said, like the character design on both their personality and appearance, because I go a little further than what they do. But I also fill out their templates. Then, the research on the story, especially if you are making a historical, more or less, story, it's, it's hard. You have to cover that. But these templates help you synthesize all that and make it more clear to you and also to not get overwhelmed because if you try to do everything at once, you are confused and at the end of the day you are not going to do your comic. For me, first I make more or less my outline, then characters, then I develop more the plot, then I do research, then I develop more the plot, etc. And I go filling out also those templates. For example, uh, for Kara, I know May. She's the main character. She's brave. She's smart. She's a quick thinker. But she has to have something wrong with her because if not, she won't be anything interesting. She keeps everything to herself and she doesn't really know how to trust others. She also has the very big problem that she sees crying as a weakness. And as a result, she can lack a bit of empathy for anything that resembles that weakness in her eyes, unless they are little kids or old people. She isn't totally 
path, you know. Now, the character templates that Studio Binder has makes me not forget that to define a character, the reader shouldn't know only their personality because that doesn't tell a story. The reader has to know who she is, what she wants, and how will she change throughout the story. Now it's your turn. Check the description for all the links, it will direct you to the videos and the worksheets are in those video descriptions. I use the one for characters, logline and the TV show bible. It really helps and I hope you start your comic in a little way. Start the 100 days of making comics and uh, really good luck. Peaches Barrientos asks, how do you get a good balance between world building, character developing and plot in your story? That's why I answered this question after El Jorge Gas question because I think the first part of this video can help you a lot as well and so in this part I'm just going to like explain further terms and mention a couple of more things regarding plot and character development and even a little bit of research but essentially I answered in the first part of this video I really think a blog um, how I am doing it can make you understand better so comment down below if you want to see that but this is a very good complex question and I will answer to you but also explain it to people who may not, not know all this stuff you may be more of an expert and just checking with me just for everyone to know world building is as its name says the process a creator goes through to invent to build a world that may not even exist. This may be very difficult if you are making a whole new civilization for your story, maybe a different planet with magic systems and different races of creatures, like what Tolkien did in The Lord of the Rings, where he literally invented a new language and so many things. A bit easier if you're almost directly writing what you know, like maybe your city or town in a different time for people that also live in similar places, it's quite easier for us to imagine New York and you knowing what a taxi is than me trying to explain what a panta is. If someone in the comments know what a panta is, I will love you. Uh, I'm actually having a very hard time inventing and composing the world from May's War as it's inspired from, from ancient nations that we don't learn much at school, such as ancient China, ancient Rome, Spain, what which was part of Rome, uh, etc. But I don't have to focus as much in that as what I will have to have a character driven story. Now that we understand the concept of world building, I would say that the next step before developing it is to decide between making a story that's character driven versus plot driven. If you choose a character driven story, you will focus more in the conflict and interchange of your characters and as a result, that's what directly changes the shape of the plot. Currently, many stories are written this way and one of the easiest to recognize as a character driven story, maybe, is the comic The Walking Dead by Robert Kirkman. You probably already know that it's about a zombie apocalypse and you are reading because of the characters, their decisions, their battles between each other and how everyone changes to survive. And it's a very interesting take, not unique to this comic but a zombie situation because fear is a very primal sense in the human being and this zombie situation makes us face the animal, the rawest part of being a human which allows you to see deep changes and how every little decision affects the characters. You see some of the characters become heroes to protect the people they love, some becoming so afraid or depressed they kill themselves in spite of the people they love, some start enjoying killing and torture and you know. So in this case your characters must be very well defined, even build them first than your world building and plot. You have to be careful to not be repetitive as I have been told the TV show in The Walking Dead may be. But so far in the comic, where I am not up to date, I must admit, the different things the characters have encountered, in part thanks to the plot but mostly because of their own decisions, have been enough to make it one of the best comics I have ever read. Now if you choose a plot-driven story, you will focus more on the external conflict, 
action, and even some interesting plot twists. Here the characters make quick decisions according to the plot, so their internal conflict isn't a deep focus in the story, even if it's still there. Basically, you need good characters, always, but if you were to replace them with other characters, it would still work. There are very good popular stories with this method as well. I see it more commonly in epic stories like Lord of the Rings or maybe even Star Wars. In Lord of the Rings, if you remove the awesome Frodo from the book, who was a hero, and you have the easily influenced Frodo from the movies, or another brave hobbit, the Middle Earth War, Sauron's Rising, the Ring, all that external stuff still works pretty much without them and it's exceptional and you still know it's Lord of the Rings. You can have the hobbits misbehaving and making mistakes, but while they do that, most of the external conflicts continue to advance without changing much because of most of the hobbits' actions, with a clear exception of throwing the ring to Mount Doom, of course, and a couple of others. That doesn't mean that it would work without interesting characters at all, of course, we need characters and their change to care about the story, so let's not forget that either. Gimli's and Legolas' friendship is one of the best things ever. Frodo, especially in the book, is such a good person, he literally glows while he's sleeping. He's like an angel, and that's why everyone loves him so much, he's so kind and considerate. But the point is that here the plot should be more structured and even though you don't want to have passive characters who only react to events that happen to them, you do have active characters that according to their own will and personality will face those external conflicts that you have worked so hard on. And here I think the world building is stronger. Basically then decide if it's a character driven or plot driven story and according to that you have the starting point to how much does your story require to make the world apparent to the reader. So about world building, I feel like I can make many videos about that, but the only essential thing I wanna leave you with is that is two things. Number one, world building is different than setting. Uh, this channel is about comics because that's what I know how to do. Setting is basically the background that you have in each panel. That's not the same as world building. I will link some sources in the description as always. What's important to know is that you know the meaning behind what you're showing in the setting. The other important thing is you are making your characters travel your world because of the plot, right? Just make sure that you try to show more than tell, and if it's necessary to tell, it's okay, it's not like it's a, something horrible to avoid, it's not. Just make sure that in your world building you never do info dumping, which means making an entire page full of text or huge walls of text that's completely hideous and the readers are going to hate it, or do it with lots of drawings, that's a very good trick. Everything can be told simply, simply. And the third point, I know I said less, but yeah, whatever. You have your basic world building elements in your outline, in your plot. And if it's necessary to show more to the reader in certain scenes, it is because it helps to push the plot forward. So I, I think that's a head start on how to balance between world building, character developing and plot in your story. Let's say it as steps very quick. You develop your outline or more or less plot. And there you see if it's plot driven or character driven. Then according to that you know how much should you focus on plot and characters. And then after that you continue on building the world. In comics building the world can be easier because you are using visual elements. And I would honestly say that even if you have figured out every single detail of your empire which, or whatever world you're building, which is very important, uh, the politics, how it works, how the communication is, because that's a very good topic, etc. Like many things, the gods people believe in, the way children behave, the way a wife must behave, you know, stuff like that. You should know it all, but it's 
only apparent to the reader if it's useful to tell the story and I really hope this was useful but yeah I have to make so many videos because this is so complex thank you everyone for your questions and if this was useful give it a thumbs up if you still have questions I will be sure to answer them down below or you know we can discuss it because I am the same as you and we can discuss sources to make our writing better and yes yeah, subscribe to this channel if you are interested in more videos about comics and storytelling and I will see you in my next video bye